Welcome back to XO19. Now, it wouldn't be an Xbox showcase without a bunch of green lights and Phil Spencer. Uh, and so, welcome to the stream. In what order? The green lights first. Well, you walk in and see the green lights and first. And the fans in the community, and then... Of course, and then there's Phil. And overhead. Yeah. That's me, Xbox overhead. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for coming on the stream. Thank, Thank you for joining you. us. IGN's having me on. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. At your own show. It's, <laughs> it's like we've invaded. Um, I'd love to kick off with a sort of big picture question. It feels, yeah. it feels to me like Xbox, this generation, as it's moved through, has moved from hardware first ideas to games first ideas. And it feels like today is sort of the ultimate expression of that. We've got so many new games being announced today and so many new first party yeah. titles being announced. Would you agree with that philosophy of how you're approaching Xbox these days? Yeah, I, I've been in this role a little over five years and when we started we had real hardware innovations that we wanted to put into market. We did that with Xbox One X. You see the Elite Series 2 controller. So I feel really good about how we've done on hardware. Mm. And obviously there's future stuff to come. Mm -hmm. We thought about service a lot. We built Game Pass. We've made evolutions to Xbox Live. And I definitely heard the feedback on our first party. You need to build a stronger first party. I want more diversity in the kind of games, new storytellers. So I feel great about getting to come here to XO in London, which is awesome, mm -hmm. uh, and get to show so much work from our studios. And as you said, including three new games. But I really think about all three of those things. It's not moving from one to the other. All three have to be hard at work on all of those and we need to do great work. Are you considering this sort of your games show for now and then I would be remiss if I didn't ask if there is a Scarlet version of this kind of show coming at some point down the line? Is I think we'll actually talk about a couple more games before the end of this year. Mm -hmm. We have some things that we want to do. But yeah, we go into next year uh, you know, we've said, Scarlet, we'll talk about it next year. We'll have great game things to talk about mm -hmm. there as well. But I think one of the nice things about this shift in terms of going from Xbox One X to Project Scarlet is you can play the games that you're playing today. You'll be able to play those tomorrow and on future hardware. It's one of the commitments we made to our, our customers this generation. As we came out with X, it, it was the same games that you were playing on One, just looking better. We want to do that, but I also know people want to be excited about new stories new characters on the, uh, on the new platform, and that's yeah. something we're focused on as well. Well, I'd love to talk about those new stories and those, those new developers as well. You know, we're getting our sort of first, well, you know, first, first blush of these new Microsoft-owned uh, developers, these first-party studios, yeah. the Xbox Game Studios. Yeah. And what's the sort of overall philosophy for those guys? What's the goal right now? You've got this, like, burgeoning empire of studios that you're building we all over the world. <laughs> I'd love to know, you know, what are you, what are you aiming for? Is it just that you want to be able to provide first party exclusives on a regular basis or is there a wider kind of idea of what you're aiming to create with those partners? I would start kind of simply with what you said at the beginning. I want to make sure we have a steady lineup, a great portfolio from great studios, creators tell, telling new stories with new characters and worlds in their own way. And as a platform, our job is to give those creators the best platform to tell those stories. Mm -hmm. And some of that is hardware capability, but it's also diversity of business models. Mm. So if somebody wants to do something that's slightly more episodic, or more single player, or more service based, like whatever our studios want to go do, focus more on a, maybe a PC first title, more on a console first title, we want to enable that creativity across our full slate of uh, first party studios. And it's awesome when you can see you know, at the show, something from going from flight sim to Minecraft dungeons mm -hmm. to new stories, you tell grounded. I mean, yeah. you, it's, I love the fact that we have such a breadth of studios doing such diverse work. Well, I'd love to talk about grounded a little bit because I think when you guys bought Obsidian, I think yeah. there was a there was a certain idea of what Obsidian do. They make single player RPGs. They make big, wide narrative experiences yeah. with a lot of room for player experimentation. And then grounded is not exactly what people would expect, but as we've learned, this is a small team within Obsidian working on this stuff, sort of experimenting with an idea that they had pre the acquisition. So are you guys aiming for this allowance of a bit more, like spreading wings, a bit more security for these studios that you've bought who can maybe try new things and try Absolutely. out stuff? I yeah. mean, that's, to me, having a diversity of creativity inside of a portfolio and a company like Microsoft and Xbox that can provide that stability mm -hmm. while people are going to go take risks is something that 
one of the values we can bring to studios. Mm -hmm. You know, and on the point, we don't think there's an equation for the right game. We don't think every game has to be multiplayer, every game has to be single player. We don't think it's all about first person, or third person, or isometric, or mouse and keyboard, or controller. We think it's just about diversity of creativity, and we'll find the fun mm -hmm. uh, with the work that the different teams are doing. So we're not overly prescriptive mm -hmm. on what the studios need to go build. Obviously, in the case of Grounded and the Outer Worlds, which I think we're both playing, yeah. uh, we saw both of those games prior to the acquisition. Mm. So we got really excited about the portfolio to come, a little bit like Bleeding Edge, obviously, with Ninja yeah. Theory. So we're sitting down with those teams. We see not only the things they've announced, but the roadmap forward. But we, and we love to foster their creativity. And whether they want to put the whole studio on one game, or, the, or a small group of people want to go and try something new, mm. I just love the opportunity to get to work with so many studios to do that. Nice, and outside of your own Xbox game studios, we've also got Tell Me Why from Don't Nod, which yeah. is a really interesting case. And like, yeah. I really, amidst the history of Microsoft published stuff, like you wouldn't necessarily place it in there until now. And I know this fits into your sort of gaming for everyone yeah. initiative, which I think a lot of people have seen as a hardware focused thing or an inclusion um, on a social level thing, but you've now got software that fits into that side of things. I'd love to talk about how you got to bringing Tell Me Why into the fold. I, I love the way you told that. You know, you say, we've shown hardware innovation with things like the adaptive controller, We've done work on Xbox Live and Mixer around our community and our focus with clubs and things, and then going to our first party. Uh, don't nod, first I'll start, it's just been a studio I've been a fan of for a long time. Mm -hmm. and every time I sit down with Phil Rogers at Square and talk to him about Life is Strange, yeah. it was like, hey, this is one of those franchises I really love, if we can show it on our stage, like I'd love to go do that and just make sure it's something that we're supported. It's been great, the support we've had. And then we had the opportunity with Matt and the team to do something directly with Don't Nod. Mm -hmm. um, something that's new and as you said, kind of wants to tell, I think a very thoughtful and sound story, mm -hmm. but something, a story that regretfully hasn't been told enough through character, different types of characters um, in, in gaming, we were all in. Like yep. it was something that the, the developer wanted to do, the studio wanted to build this game and you know, tell me why is something we're incredibly excited about. And frankly, something we've had a lot of feedback from communities, so we're doing a thoughtful job along with Don't Nod on telling a story in the right way. That's really cool. And in terms of uh, not just new games, but you've got older games coming, the huge slate announced for Game Pass today. Yeah, over 50. Yeah, and the, you know, Final Fantasy, Yakuza, you made a point in your opening address today about how there's a real focus on Japanese games in there, which is, again, not something that's been as much a part of the Xbox experience for a little while, that's kind of picking up again. Like, is this a philosophical choice on your part? Are you trying to embrace that side of the industry a bit more and, and you know, bring Japanese gaming back into? Yeah, I don't know if I'm world? smart enough to be have it be philosophical. I listen to what our, our, our fans and our customers want. People tell me I don't like that there are games from Japan that don't ship on Xbox. Hmm. So I think I've now sat in every seat on the Delta flight from Seattle to Tokyo. <laughs> uh, and I've spent a lot of time with the publishers there and to get to come here to the show and talk about Yakuza, talk about the full Final Fantasy or the Final Fantasy lineup, talk about those games coming to Game Pass, bring those stories. I have more work to do. There's no doubt about it. But I will say, first and foremost, that philosophy comes from listening to what our customers are telling me mm -hmm. and our teams about what they want on our platform and areas that we need to do better. Nice. And in terms of Game Pass, with regard to your Xbox Game Studio stuff, obviously right now we're seeing every single one of those launch on Game Pass. Is that something that will continue Absolutely. in the foreseeable future? That yeah, is we're how committed it to that. Yeah. yeah, we're committed to our studios building games for our platform, mm -hmm. uh, and those studios and those franchises shipping day and date in Game Pass, and showing up it so that all those players, the millions and millions of people in Game Pass, can play those games. We think about that really as the full Xbox experience. Like when I, somebody asks me about certain franchises, is this going there or is that going there? I think about Game Pass, Xbox Live, and our first party, and, and, and frankly the hardware that we build as the full Xbox experience. And we'll do things like xCloud and stuff that let you extend that Xbox experience to other devices, but it is really about our creative capability, giving services like Game Pass great content and giving our platform and our store and our players great content to buy if that's what they choose and enabling that content to go anywhere and people can stay with their community. Nice, and Game Pass right now is a, is a cross-generational thing. It, it reaches back into the past of games from other you know, previous platform generations. Is that something that's going to continue on the next generation? Absolutely. Yeah. People who are Game Pass subscribers today 
are already Game Pass subscribers for Project Scarlet. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I love that. In fact, we've even done things like the Xbox All Access program, mm. which is here in the UK, uh, which is allowing people to actually acquire a console today, mm. but also they're kind of already in to get Project Scarlet when it launches, yeah. and that Game Pass subscription bridges both. So you're going to get to continue with your games on Project Scarlet, your save games, your community, everything will be right there. You know, we did a, a talk, uh, it was a few years ago now, about kind of cross-generational hardware and hardware upgrades. Um, and it was something that the PC space hadn't seen as much as Windows had. Yeah. And on Windows, if you buy a new graphics card for your PC, you don't think about losing access mm -hmm. to games that to go play. And that wasn't an easy thing for the hardware engineering team to go tackle, but it was something that we were dedicated to. I think when I first started talking to that, I was confusing people. But I love the fact now that we can talk about games as games, mm -hmm. and not that as you move to a better piece of hardware, something that's more performant, uh, that all of a sudden you've lost the ability to play the games and, and the things that you love. I want to bring that forward, and that's something we're definitely, definitely committed to. And the same thing with your accessories. I get a lot of questions about the Elite Series 2 controller, and is that a controller that's going to work on Project Scarlet? And absolutely, like yeah. your controllers are going to continue to work. It's not to say we won't do things with the next controller, uh, but it is something I want your, con your experience to be continuous. That's awesome to hear. Um, unfortunately, that's all the time we have, but thank you so much for joining us, and it's been an amazing show, and we're about to wrap it up, but we'll be right back after this.